Guys, welcome back to the channel. Highly on just concluded uh, 2021 uh, Q4 earnings call. I'm going to throw the highlights at you as I see them. This is going to be the shortened version of the video, so you can watch the entire video and try to keep this to under 10 minutes. In 2021, they doubled the team. Um, they expanded the board. Okay, it's different schools of thought on this, but I'm just giving you the goods from an impartial perspective. Uh, as we heard it, some of these stats were made available to me by one of my community members here uh, that covered this company uh, intimately. Uh, and um, these uh, are fabulous, fabulous stats. And they're a summary of the call that I'll provide in the description, uh, as well as the comments section. You kick over there, read the transcript, or you can listen to it on audio. Um, they did recognize revenue for the first time, 200,000 on EX sales. Um, that, that was great. I, I thought to, to post that number um, really took them from a, a category of being a non-revenue company to, to one that is, is generating some revenue. Um, the, the, the next big milestone, which is really going to be the catalyst here, is to turn profit. Right, that's going to be the key is the bottom line profit and driving those uh, uh, margins um, that they're looking to seek at 34%. Um, the ride and drive of events that they've had, they've had overwhelming positive feedback uh, from each of those ride along events. So some real insight there on the road show that's been um, that's been happening over the last few months anyway, um, since the larger expos had announced that those would be rolling out. Um, we received 100 deposits on the ERX, backed by thousands of dollars put down on each truck. Thomas did not go into detail on that. I was glad he did not. He was being pressed during the Q&A um, on that, um, that section, and I'm glad he did not allude to that. That's highly on business, um, nobody else. But to, to, to uh, demonstrate that they are getting some deposit orders on that was a real positive. 100 on the ERX, and then secured 325 future production slots for the ERX, I thought that was huge as well. Next on the list, they defined, and this was nicely articulated during the Q&A, the definition between the orders and the reservations, orders being defined as paid with deposits. OK, um, so money down on the truck gives a little bit more uh, of an indication of an intention to buy rather than a reservation, which is defined by Ileon to be how many trucks a fleet could adopt. OK, Thomas Healy articulated on this a, a, a bit, and I'll expand upon this um, during my long highly on video. This is just the rollout of the 30 elements um, that I picked up on the call and was articulated in this report that was uh, that was sent to me. Um, uh, Bub is aimed to build the backlog uh, orders. This is something I've talked about a lot. Thomas finally alluded to building out the backlog um, and really did allude to coming into some more orders here uh, in the short term. Uh, from some hyper, from some uh, innovation council members, which I thought was a huge takeaway. Uh, currently, a hundred production slots and two thousand additional reservations uh, as they're looking to build out these uh, reservation uh, slots for 2023 and 2024 and beyond. Um, there was some fleet feedback that was uh, uh, communicated during the call. Um, they couldn't tell when the generator was working and when it was off. So when it kicked on to actually provide that onboard charge to the batteries, I couldn't tell if it was on. This is granular information that is in and of itself, it may not be that huge, but collectively, these guys are doing everything right in, in what they're doing in this product validation. And I don't see anybody else doing anything like it. I'll allude to that as, as I get down into this fleet feedback. It shifts smoother. First time I had ever heard that, I thought that was fabulous. OK, um, no rain, range anxiety. Uh, the other BEVs tested at 100 miles before recharge. Thomas doubled and tripled and quadrupled down on this many, many times. I didn't know BEV was at 100, and he kept wanting to jam that home. I, I think the BEV statistic has crept into the 350, 450 range, and I, I think that's wrong. I, I think in reality, they're not meeting those specifications. And he articulated many, many times that their competition right now in the BEV versus the range extender product is at 100, which is stupid. Um, that's going to fill a, a, a short range type of an application, a kind of a come home type of a method if they're going to roll those out in certain applications, certainly not long haul. Um, requiring no new infrastructure, that's huge. We all know that. Bullish shareholders understand that. Uh, the truck gets to keep the same look. Um, that was positive feedback from the field. Uh, that was my positive twist around Ileon is they're not looking to reinvent the entire truck fleets like this. And so do drivers alike. Um, 
it keeps value when recruiting new trucks and obtained drivers. This is something that Thomas alluded to as being something that he did not foresee transpiring, but as a, 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 an uh, opportunity to attract new drivers to the industry. What a wonderful opportunity to provide this new technology um, as an incentive to come on board and, and participate in the trucking industry uh, as a whole. Uh, love the truck speed, power, and how quiet the truck is. Um, these were some of the feedbacks that came out that was articulated on the call. Um, Hylion is taking the lessons learned from the demos to build the ERX. Um, so, uh, you know, I know my favorite analyst, Fish and Delaney, um, I, I'm not really sure why they spend so much of their lives uh, trying to ruin this company. I, I, I just don't get it. But, you know, trying to value this company right now is futile. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to do put a multiple on it. Um, and, and they're just not seeing the big picture. I, I find it ironic how they're always on the Q&A calls, um, trying to pick you know, holes in what Hylion is doing right now in the early stages of their development firing on all cylinders, um, but taking the lessons learned from the EX and incorporating them into the ERX product. Now, they, Thomas talked about the learnings from that being hard to quantify. I'll talk about this in the long video um, a little bit more, but they did allude to the R&D already kicking off and starting on stepping into the agnostic and the hydrogen fuel cell ERX. That's going to be a game changer. I'm not going to care about the EX hybrid anymore when basically that morphs into two specific products for specific applications the range extender that can run off of RNG and the range extender that can run off of hydrogen fuel cell. That, that's gonna be a game changer. They've already kicked that off. Uh, 20 ERX units uh, will be built out from now and into the first half of 2023 for fleets to test. That's wonderful. Uh, and then they will look to pursue the CARB, EPA and NHTSA approvals that are scheduled for the second half of 2023. Um, so that'll be, that'll be huge as well. Once those certifications come in, um, they'll be eligible for the grant program. Under the hybrid EX, here's some of the statistics that rolled out. Q4 orders pushed into Q1 2022 due to parts delays. We all knew that, um, which was part of my anemic uh, expectations for this earnings. I, I was pleasantly surprised, and I'll articulate that much more on my longer video, but um, this is meant to get this information out to you guys quickly. Uh, orders uh, reduced due to fleets wanting to go fully electric. Um, this was this was huge. I, I don't I don't look at this as a, a as a negative. I look at it as an evolution um, into solidifying the hypertruck ERX, improving upon that, and look then looking at for other use cases for their battery management system um, as the company evolves and and takes their technologies to new applications. It wouldn't have been possible. Um, to be where they are with the Hypertruck product without the learnings from the early days and the multiple millions of, of road miles of validation um, to segue into the ERX product, okay? Fleets uh, still see demand and application for the EX. I don't think it's going away uh, and will meet those needs, okay? The revenue that is being called for in 2022, two to three million, which are gonna be generated primarily from the hybrid EX, Few things that I heard, especially from Sherry Baker, who knocked this call out of the park, no doubt about it. I thought Thomas did as well, um, but I thought the CFO did a phenomenal job as well. So, I, you know, I give I give an A to both of them, um, not an A plus, um, still early renderings of a company here that needs to do more. Um, they need to do more. This this I, I will talk about. Um, my uh, both sides of the application here in my long video when I roll those out. Uh, but on the board and the uh, CSO front, uh, we did bring on Jay Craig uh, during the quarter. That was huge. He was the former Meritor CEO and uh, chief of the board of directors over there. Uh, Sherry Lance as well was also from Meritor. Uh, she's the new chief strategy officer uh, for Hylion. Um, Lance comes on this month and in charge of fuel agnostic solutions and hydrogen fuel cell integration. That was huge on the call, huge. Um, I, this is why I don't understand the time, timing of the downgrade that came out shortly after the earnings call. Um, these guys are really going to have to eat crow someday. They really are. And I, it's going to be fun for me to sit back and watch these guys be dead wrong. 
it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, well positioned for the future when hydrogen comes available. It's already begun the fuel cell development. I've mentioned that. Uh, the sales team expanded to include uh, four new veterans on that sales team. Um, the proprietary software should produce new revenue streams down the line. That was huge. We've talked about this, the onboard management systems, getting these fleets in a kind of a subscription-based model where Hylion can partner with the fleets to help the monitoring going on. Uh, they uh, ended the year 2021 with 557,000 in cash on the books, cash and cash equivalents, uh, two to 3,000 in revenue for EX sales, or, or excuse me, two to 3 million forecast for uh, 2022 uh, for those sales. Uh, and then 125 to 135 uh, million for their burn rate for the full, full year uh, in 2022. So a little bit of an extension there on the burn rate. That's to be expected. They're going heavy on R&D right now. Um, and, and I found that to be positive. The real takeaway for me, guys, um, I went into this earnings expectation was zero, zero uh, expectation. I thought on all fronts, they blew it out of the water. You guys are going to want to stand by and catch my longer highly on video where I go in depth uh, on each and every one of these reactions to the quarter. There was a ton more uh, than the 30 bullets that I've just fired away at you guys, but I wanted to get it out there for you guys so you understood how much uh, how much came out of this call because it was huge to close down what has been a dismal year. They really needed to go out on a on a um, a good note. And I believe that they've done that. Guys, if you appreciate the message, you know, make sure and subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom of the video and share the message with those highly on investors out there that are looking for an update on the company. Um, things are cranking away on all fronts right now with highly on a lot of good building points here going forward and a lot to be excited for going into the future. Guys, thank you so much for uh, tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.